Hi everyone, welcome to The Shack. Following the relative success of my uh, earlier video, um, where I basically reviewed all the uh, shortwave portables I've got here, um, I did mention that I would um, do another video with my um, tabletop receivers, which, uh, and lots of you kind of said, yeah, that'd be really interesting. So I'm gonna do that now. There's about six or seven to get through. Um, most of you will have probably seen these before, but um, uh, the idea really is just to sort of give a bit of a running commentary and a bit of history. Um, so I'm going to start with the FRG 7700 uh, Yesu. This was actually, I think this was, the, this was the second tabletop I bought after the 8800. And the reason I bought it in the first place um, was because I wanted this, the FRT 7700 antenna sort of tuner. Um, back in those days, I was only using a kind of N-fed wire antenna, so I thought some matching would be good. So I kept looking on eBay, and eventually I found one. The only problem was um, the one that I found also came with the radio, so I kind of bought this radio because I wanted this. And I only paid, I think, about 150 or 160 quid, um, but it actually got stuck in uh, customs, and I had to pay about another 60 quid duty on it which I was really pissed off about, that's a technical term, um, but I did, um, and I'm, I'm glad I did. It's, it's really interesting, the 7700 is a receiver that I wasn't really very aware of when I was a kid. The radio I wanted was the 8800, which I'll come on to. Um, the 7700 was a little bit before my time. Um, I think it came out in like 1980 or 81 and um, was around for sort of three or four years on the market. I mean, it's what is interesting is that this rig has a very good reputation for medium wave DXing um, and I have used it for that. I'm not sure it's any better than the 8800. Obviously, it's the predecessor to the 8800, um, but I have copied quite a lot of medium wave DX on it. Um, so I think with the duty, I paid about 200 quid for the lot and um, it's quite, it's got a reasonable spec. Sensitivity is about half a microvolt on across the sort of shortwave bands from two to thirty megahertz, um, and it's a very solid receiver. The um, band selection, it's I think it's, it's the the shortwave bands. Well, from long way through to thirty megs is in one megahertz steps, and that selector, that kind of that pop became or switch um, became really noisy and started failing. So I got Graham Radio Cruncher to overhaul this radio for about 200 quid a few years ago so it'll last another 40 years um but you know when you consider that you know this radio yeah is just over 40 years old or about 40 years old and still performing really well so um, i'm very happy i bought it but as i said it was the second tabletop i bought um after the uh 8800 um because i wanted a matching unit for my wire antenna at the time and would i recommend one i certainly would there was one for sale at the newbury uh, amateur radio, Newbury and District Amateur Radio Society rally a few weeks ago, um, but I didn't buy it because I've already got one and I've already got a lot of others, but um, definitely recommend one. If you can pick one up for a couple hundred quid, you're doing really well. So, um, so yeah, so that's the FRG 7700. Doesn't get a lot of use, um, but uh, it's a keeper. I wouldn't sell it. Right, the radio next to it is the 8800. Um, this radio feels like i've got more history with it this is the radio that i used to look at in the magazines when i was a kid shortwave magazine or wherever it was um and the kind of the radio i kind of lusted after um, this is the radio that followed the 7700 it came out in 85 it was around for a few years actually i think until sort of about 1993 um, I think I paid about a couple hundred quid for it in 2015 or 2016. And this was the first tabletop receiver I purchased when I got back into sort of DXing and shortwave radio in, in 2015. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really happy that I did. Um, I think I said previously uh, in my portable radio video that, you know, they say don't ever meet your heroes. But with this radio, I did. It was never the best performing tabletop receiver on the market in the 1980s, but it always performed well. Um, slightly more sensitive, I think it was 0.4 microvolt sensitivity across the short wave from, well, from 1.8 to 30 megahertz, um, 0.1 kilo, kilohertz, so 100 hertz display sensitivity. Um, it's got a narrow and wide audio bandwidth filter, which I think is six and 2.7 kilohertz or six and three kilohertz. 
Um, unlike the 7700, which is a triple conversion, uh, super heck, this is a double conversion. I think performance is basically identical. There's very little in it. Um, I don't hear any more on the 8800 than I do on the 7700. So um, from that point of view, there's um, there's really nothing in, in the performance. Um, but yeah, this was a radio that I can remember seeing in magazines, as I said, when I was a kid and I could never afford. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, this is still one of my, it was my first tabletop receiver and still probably one of my favorites. Again, it's just a receiver, I, I wouldn't sell. So, um, so that's the uh, 8800. The next one is the, uh, I did a video using this rig um, about a week ago. So this is the Panasonic RF3100L. And I, although it's a very good radio, I don't kind of really put it in the same bracket as the Yesus that I've just been talking about. Um, I paid 50 quid for this radio. I don't know how Harwell Amateur Radio Society came, got hold of it. It may have been through a sign and key sale, but I was offered it for, um, for 50 quid. And you can't, well, you can't say no at 50 quid for, for, for this receiver. Early 80s, I think 1982 to 1985 um, is when it was on the market. It's uh, got it's basically um, continuous coverage from 150 kilohertz, so right at the bottom, a long way to, to 30 megahertz, one kilohertz display, uh, and it's also got a sort of bandwidth audio bandwidth setting, wide and narrow, which is seven and three kilohertz. Um, I like this radio actually. It doesn't have a um, an option. It's got external antenna options, high and low Z, I think, but it doesn't have an option for a shielded, you know, coaxial connector. But you know, it could be modified to do that, um, and that's probably why it hasn't had as much use as it as it might have done um, if uh, uh, if it had a BNC. I'd have immediately connected it to one of my Welbrook loops. But um, for fifty quid, it's a good radio. I had it in my office at home for a while. It's good for um, broadcast listening. Um, you know, Radio 5 Live, Radio 4, etc. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a very good radio. And I, I didn't realise, actually, but it's actually quite a popular radio. When I, um, uh, when I uh, uploaded and published a video about a week ago with this in the garden, um, I think I was talking about the hot weather. It was the day that I think that we finally achieved the hottest temperature since records began using this rig. And I got quite a few comments um, from people saying how much they like this radio. So, um, so yeah, the Panasonic RF3100L. Uh, interested if anyone knows how much these things go for these days. Um, I'm fairly sure that 50 quid was a bargain. So, um, but uh, yeah, uh, a radio that I like, but not really would, I wouldn't DX on it because of the difficulty really in, in attaching a magnetic loop and you know although that is doable with modification i'm either too busy or cba um so uh, so it doesn't get it doesn't get that much use but um uh, it's also portable um you put batteries in it and carry it around which is quite good but uh, apart from that it doesn't get a lot of use but it is a good rig um right next one uh is the frg7 which you guys will know all about because i've been posting a lot of videos using this rig recently um I paid 70 quid at the Nadar's rally for this radio, and that was an absolute bargain. Someone sent me a link showing one had been sold on eBay recently, I think for $300 or $350. I think originally came out in 1977. It's got the Wadley Loop um, system in it. So um, tuning this radio is a bit different, really. You have to set the band, set the megahertz, uh, and then and adjust the pre-selector to optimize the signal, and then, and then the, the actual, in fact, if I just turn it on, you can see that you set the, 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 the frequency, a uh, kilohertz um, uh, and tens and single hertz here. One thing about this rig is that it is actually very sensitive um, and it's got the most accurate analog tuning system I've ever encountered on any rig. Um, and also very popular uh, with the uh, some of the subscribers. Uh, it's just a fantastic radio, it's different. Um, everybody loves it. Uh, I love it. And for 70 quid, it was an absolute steal. What isn't so useful, the tone narrow and low normal tone setting is quite good. The kind of attenuator for DX normal and local doesn't seem to do very much. You, it, it, not as much as you would expect it to do on a, on a modern rig. But, um, you know, it's got sideband, CW, 
Um, it's uh, it, it really is an excellent rig, and it's probably the rig I'm enjoying using most of all. Now, I think in around about 1979, 1980, towards the end of the production run, they modified this rig to add a fine tuning control, which this has, which means it's a later production model. And I didn't realize that, so my thanks to, to Greg, uh, one of the, who's got his own YouTube channel actually, who pointed that out to me. So uh, yeah, FRG7, if you can get hold of one, well, not at any price, but I highly recommend it. Really, really love that rig. Right, next one, uh, another one of my favorites. Um, this is the Icom ICR71E. I bought it. Uh, around about Christmas time, second hand from uh, an, an online advert, and immediately kind of fell in love with this with this rig. It's just basically a pleasure to use, and um, our Icom, uh, you know, get this kind of stuff right. The i the ICR seventy five is another good example. Um, this rig, I think, was on sale for a long time. I think it came out in eighty four. Uh, and, and it was on sale until 1996. So ICOM's kind of reputation for longevity with receivers, which is the same with the ICR75, same with this radio. And um, it's a quad conversion. Uh, sensitivity on sideband on, with, on shortwave is 0.15 microvolts. Uh, on AM, it's half a microvolt. Um, it's got IF notch and uh, passband tuning. It's basically such a brilliant performer. Um, it it really is um, well. It's definitely put it this way. It's it's, it's one of my absolute favourites. Even comes with a remote control, which some of you will have seen. So um, yeah, this rig is just literally um, a pleasure to use, and um, uh, I'm glad I bought it. And I, again, I got it cheap. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was two hundred and something pounds. But um, uh, yeah, I uh, definitely recommend this radio and, and it is, as I said, very popular with uh, some of you guys. So that's the Icom ICR71E. Right, so now let's go to the other side. So here I have two rigs. You're looking at the JRC NRD525, the legendary radio. Um, we'll start with that one actually. So JRC legendary uh, anyway as a company, uh, all of the radio. I don't think they've ever produced a, a bad radio. Uh, the 525, um, 1986 to uh, 1992. Um, it's a double conversion, uh, 0.5 uh, microvolt um, sensitivity uh, on uh, shortwave. It's got a notch filter, noise blanker, display down to 10 hertz. Um, and then it's got audio bandwidth filters on sideband of, I think, 2 and 6 kilohertz at AM, 4 and 10 kilohertz. So um, it's one of the best performers I have in the shack. And Greg, again, to quote him, said it would be probably... It, 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 it might be the best performing radio that I own. And um, it's, there's no doubt that it's up there. It's um, with the passband tuning, you you know, it's one of those radios similar to the um, FRG7. You know, you can spend a lot of time fiddling around with the controls of this radio, which is something that I do. And you've probably seen that on my videos. Um, it's just uh, an amazing rig. I paid, I'm going to say I paid 375 quid for it. And if you look back through the channel, you can check whether I'm right or not. But I bought it secondhand, I think from eBay. The guy delivered it to me at work. Um, three or four years ago, but I think I paid 375 quid, which, in, and that these, you know, the, the, it seems to me prices with second hand receivers and transceivers just keep going up. But if you can find yourself a JRC, any JRC, and you can afford it, because they do cost a bit more if you're comparing like for like specs, you just don't hesitate. It's just so sensitive, uh, so selective. Um, the only letdown is the audio. Um, the audio for me is a bit, is, is, at times is a bit bassy, what I call a bit muddy, but you can improve it immensely by just plugging an external speaker into it. So I plug my Bose Soundlink Mini into it, but uh, just an amazing radio. And uh, yeah, everything about JRC is quality. Um, I shouldn't say this because I'm probably tempting fate, but if anything goes wrong with it, it's going to cost a lot of money to put it right, that's for sure, but uh, it would be worth it. I think the 535 is, is, is also very, very good. Um, but I, I, I seem to think that the 525 is one of those receivers that JRC did that everybody seems to kind of like love. So, um, so yeah, so that's... Is that my favourite? 
I think it was. Um, I think at the moment, the Icon ICR 71E, just in terms of how nice that is to use, and the FRG7, which is so different, I think at the moment they're, they're kind of my favourites. Um, but uh, probably the JRC NRD525 outperforms a lot of them. Right, and then above that, a radio that some of you, I'm sure, will recognise very easily is the Icon ICR75. Quite diminutive, diminutive in size compared to some of the others. Um, this radio came out in 1999 and was on the market until 2015. So this radio was on the market for 16 years. Um, triple conversion, 30, uh, 30 kilohertz to 60 megahertz. Um, 0.16 microvolt sensitivity on shortwave, across the shortwave bands, I believe. Twin passband synchronous detection. Display down to one hertz. Um, audio, the standard audio bandwidth filters for AM are, uh, I can, are, are terrible. I think for AM you get 6 and 20, 20 kilohertz. For sideband you get 2 and 4. So the, the filters aren't what I would consider to be optimum, but you can get upgrades and, and mods, uh, kits to improve that. Um, I think I paid 375 quid for this radio as well, um, which at the time was a reasonable price. I don't think it was a massive bargain, but um, it, uh, it was recommended to me. Um, and I went out and bought one uh, again on eBay um, and never looked back. So, um, so yeah, it's a, a favourite of mine. I, th I keep saying it, but I think all these, all, all these desktop, tabletop radios, whatever you want to call them, they're all kind of keepers. Um, there is not any really that I think I would get rid of. I think I'd get rid of some, a couple of my transceivers before I sold these. So, um, so yeah, Icom ICR seventy five, very sensitive. Um, again, with the twin passband tune in, it's one of those rigs where you kind of with a weak signal you find yourself fiddling around, um, setting the passband, etc. Um, uh, but I quite like that. So those two, that rig, the ICR seventy five and the NRD five two five are. Definitely rigs that are a little bit more, not complicated to use, but uh, it, it, there's way more interaction with the front panel when you're trying to um, uh, optimise the modulation from a, from a weak signal on those two radios. But that's only to the betterment of their overall performance. Um, both brilliant rigs. So, um, yeah, but I think that's all of them. I'm just sort of trying to think, are there any others? But I, I, th I think that's um, all of the rig, all of the tabletop rigs that I would well rigs that i would class as tabletop there is one more actually um which i'll go and grab it there's there's this thing there we go which you should be able to see there hf 150 and that is a superb rig and the reason i'm including it is because it kind of has the uh form factor of a tabletop although it's actually quite small um, I'll just pull the camera back a little bit. So the low HF150 also runs on batteries though. Um, that's a superb radio. So I guess you could, I'm not really counting that because it is kind of, it is a portable, just has a kind of tabletop, a miniature sort of tabletop type form factor. But if you can get your hands on a low HF150 such as this, do it. I think I paid 140 for this rig. But I'm not uh, again. Look back at the videos on the channel, and you'll and, and you'll be able to, you'll be able to confirm. But uh, it was a bargain at the time. Um, but it doesn't 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 really count um, as a as a tabletop. So uh, so there you go. So that's basically all of them. Um, and uh, yeah, the most recent acquisition, the FRG7, um, is the one that I'm kind of using at the moment, uh, and probably will continue to do so until um, until I buy another one. Which, but I'm not sure when uh, that will be. Uh, I've got enough radios right now. Right now, I'm actually waiting for the Eaton uh, Satellite HD, which is the, so this is the reincarnation um, of the Eaton E1. That's kind of the radio I'm waiting for. And if I'd um, uh, if I'd known it was coming, if I'd known it was definitely going to come, I wouldn't have bought this. The Texan H501X. Um, just basically not impressed with its performance, really. Um, okay for broadcast um, uh, signals, you know, listening to BBC Radio 5 Live, etc., that kind of thing. 
um, terrible for DX on medium wave. Can't I've never heard any transatlantic DX on it, even with even with the mag mag loop. Audio on sideband is quite often terrible, very kind of muddy, harsh. Um, I can't get on with that radio at all, to be honest with you. Um, and I suppose because of its size, it is a portable, but it's kind of also designed to be used on a desk. So I just thought I'd make that comment. Although I probably made exactly the same comment on my um, previous uh, video. So there you go. That's the Oxford shortwave log uh, world of uh, desktop receivers, the FRG 7700, its younger brother or sister, the FRG 8800, the RF 3100L, the FRG 7, the ICOM ICR 71E, the NRD 525 and the ICOM ICR 75. Um, all brilliant rigs. Um, and uh, actually what's interesting, uh, this HF transceiver, look at that. So that's the ICOM IC740. Look at the kind of industrial design, the styling of that, and just look how similar it is to the ICR71E. So there you go. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. The um, portable uh, radio uh, video I did a week or so ago seemed to be, you know, of a lot of interest. So um, they're, they're, they're my views. Uh, with a bit of sort of background commentary and a narrative on the all all these um desktop receivers that I have and um yeah I'd be really interested to know um how you guys feel about some of these radios and of course if you've got any questions on any of them at all don't hesitate to uh, to ask via the uh, comment section on the channel so uh, yeah anyway that's it from uh, Oxford shortwave log shack um I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll look forward to hearing from you again soon. All the best and 73.